Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today, I'm going to go over my Stratomatic Baseball team in one of my Stratomatic Baseball leagues, uh, the Elmwood League. You may have heard me talk about it before in the past, and I will put a link to one of the past videos um, as a, an end screen so that you can click on it and see what I was talking about last year about the team. So anyway, I think every year I do a preview of my team going into the draft, and that's exactly what this is. I will preview we um, I will preview the 20 players that I have on the team presently headed into the draft. And then I will let you know what my plans are for the draft um, to fill out the rest of the team and get ready for this Stratomatic Baseball season in the Elmwood League um, as it will, you know, as the Elmwood League will be. So um, that's what the plan is, uh, just to let you know. Uh, it's a 20 round draft and it's going to start on February 26th um, and we'll see. I think I've got a pretty good team. I think that I uh, kind of like my chances for being competitive at least. Don't know if we'll make the playoffs this year. Uh, the pitching is still a little shoddy, but I do like our chances of at least being competitive and then we will go from there and we will see how everything uh, pans out at that point. But let's get into who is my team, who is on my team and what my plans for the draft are. And uh, for that draft, prior to, well, prior to that draft, every team keeps 20 players and that has already been done. The cut down to 20 players has been completed. And then we have a 20 round draft. Um, but if you've traded picks away, you won't have 20 picks. And that is my situation. I have traded picks away, so I don't have 20 draft picks in the upcoming draft. I will only have 38 players on my roster at the conclusion of the draft because I only have 18 picks. I should also mention that my 18 picks begin in the second round. I have um, a late, like at the bottom of the second round, the last pick in the second round. And then I have two picks in the fifth. From then on, I pick pretty much every uh, round, but because of the picks that I traded away, that's how my first five rounds of the draft will shape up. I won't have a pick in the first. I'll have one at the bottom of the second, and then I'll have two in the fifth. One at the top of the fifth, and then one, I believe, near or at the bottom of the fifth. So that's how that's gonna, um, that's how that's gonna shape up. So also that's, that's the reason why I can't really be sure of who I'll be able to get because there are uh, 24 teams in the league and, you know, I'm picking basically, um, or 20 teams, sorry. There's 20 teams in the league, so I'm, I'm not picking till 40th. So I don't really know who I'll be able to get. I just know that I'm going to be putting the emphasis probably on starting pitching. So um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go over who I have on my team going into this draft and then we will discuss what I think I need and uh, and who I'm, you know, well, not really who I'm going to pick because you'll see by where I pick that I'm really not going to be able to know that um, probably with any degree of certainty before the draft or before my pick comes up. So you can see I've got the board out here uh, with the... Um, with the uh, baseball field laid out and uh, bullpen and starting pitching listed and the DH listed. So let's get into doing the offense first because the offense is really where my bread's going to be buttered. Um, I have a pretty good offense and the team is almost totally in place offensively except for the first baseman. So we will um, we'll play that by ear. Let's get into it. So at DH, we're going to have Nelson Cruz. 
And if you know anything about Nelson Cruz, you know that he was very good last year. Quite a good hitter. Now, in Stratomatic, Nelson Cruz only can DH. He cannot play first base. Now, I am in a league where... there. I'm in another league where you can actually... Um, make a you can designate a, a dh to be a first baseman but this is not one of those leagues so nelson cruz has to be the dh and even in that other league if i were to put nelson cruz at um first base he would be a five so so uh moving along we have chance cisco at catcher and he will be a catcher four. So um, you got that. Now, Cisco was pretty decent, but there aren't a lot of really great hitting catchers. There's very few in the league. And if you're lucky enough to have one, well, you have one, but I don't. So we're going to go with Chance Cisco. I will definitely need a backup catcher, maybe two, and we will discuss that when we discuss how many players at every position I intend to get. Now, as I said, I don't have a first baseman. I do, however, have two second basemen. And that is Joey Wendell. And he is a second base two. And I also have Ruffnid Odor. And he is a second base four. So the plan is right now, as far as second base, obviously, is to play Wendell at second full time. And also, as I go over these guys, I will discuss whether they can play all season under the rules of our league. Um, so um, Nelson Cruz, Cisco, Odor, and Wendell can all play all season unlimited. Well, not really unlimited, but the limit is so high that they wouldn't reach it. It's something like 700 at bats. So um, that is uh, that's a good situation there. But right now, the plan for second base is that Wendell will be the uh, second baseman, and Odor will be a backup. At shortstop, I got Timmy Anderson, my main man from the. Uh from the White Sox, and he is a shortstop four. So that's unfortunate, but he can hit. The man can really, really hit. He can hit for power a little bit. He's He can run, and he can hit the ball and get on base. So you put up with the four at shortstop. At third, I have Evan Longoria. And he is a third base, too, so he's not a bad defensive third baseman. Not the greatest hitter anymore in his career, but he'll do. I drafted him last year, so he's in his second year on my Providence Grays team, Stratomatic baseball team. Now, the outfield depends on whether you're facing a lefty or a righty. And I will go through that. Also, in this league, if you have a guy that's rated at center field, he can play any of the other outfields at that same rating. And if you have a guy who's rated in any outfield other than center field, he can play any of the other outfields as a rating that's one worse than the rating he has. So we're, we'll we'll get into that as we go on here but left field for left field against right-handed pitching I will have Randall Gritchick and in left field against uh, right-handed pitching he will be a left field four because he is a center field four so that's what we're going to have against righties. And then we also have Bryce Harper, who will play left 
against righties, or no, against lefties, sorry. And he will be a, um, he will be a left field four. Because he is a right field two, but he's also a center field four. And so the four would transfer to left. Unless, really, he's a right field three. Maybe I can get away with him being a left field three. I don't know. Uh, that'll be up to the commissioner. But anyway, I can talk to him about that later. But it doesn't matter. He's going to be the left fielder uh, versus left-handed pitching anyway. So now in center field, we're going to have Bellinger versus... Uh, right-handed pitching and he will be a center field one and uh, against uh, left-handed pitching we will have will play Grichik because you can see I've got Grichik against right-handers in left but not playing um, against left-handers so, against left-handers, Grichik will be the uh, center fielder. And against left-handed pitching, spelled his name wrong there, but anyway. So, he'll be the center fielder versus um, left-handed pitching in center field. Now, in right, we have Bryce Harper who will play right field as a right field two versus right-handed pitching. And against left-handed pitching, we're going to have Joey Gallo, who is a right field one in Stratomatic, best defensive uh, right field, rated right fielder. Um, he, however, does hit worse against... Um, left-handed pitching. But because of the um, because of the alignment of the outfield for other reasons, like putting Harper in left versus a uh, left-handed pitcher, that means Gallo has to play in right versus a right-handed pitcher. Now, I also do have, and we'll we'll put on the bench here. We'll put the bench right here. I also do have Adam Engel. Now, Engel is an outfield one. He plays as a one in all of the outfields, which is great. The problem with Engel is that he only has 238 available at bats for my team during the season. So if I were to start him, that would only be 60 games. And then after he played 60 games, he would be ineligible to play. So I'm going to use him as an injury replacement and slash um, defensive outfielder when um, at times he needs to come in for defense, potentially in left field where I only have fours depending uh, or no matter who is pitching. So that's what you got there. So that is my offense. As you can see, I have a very good offense coming into the into the season. Hitting won't be a problem, even with nobody at first. You know, uh, my my favorite quote of my own is that first basemen grow on trees. Say what? Because they do. No matter where you draft in the draft, no matter how late you pick them, you will find a first baseman that can play first base that can hit somewhat. You're not going to get the greatest first baseman. You're not going to get a, a Goldschmidt or somebody like that. But you will get a guy who can hold his own at first base, who's decent, who's good enough. Um, and with the rest of this offense, that's all I should need. Now on the starting rotation. And for the starting rotation, we have, at the, at the very top, we have Kevin Gosman. Now, Gosman last year was a good starting pitcher. He was a very good starting pitcher. He had like a 112 whip or something like that, or a 114 whip. Um, now, 
And I want to also say that I didn't mention before, this league will use the 60 game cards, but will multiply the statistics uh, by, um, I believe it's 2.7, to get the, um, the requisite number of at-bats that they would have had, you know, if, if everybody had played an entire season. So Gosman can pitch all season long, no limits. Again, <clears throat> there really is a limit, but it's like 250 innings. So he's not going to reach 250 innings because I would have him ideally in a five-man rotation. The next guy, and I'm going by innings pitched. I'm going by how long they can, you know, how, how much of the season they're eligible for. So the next one would be um, Kyle Freeland. And Kyle Freeland, again, he can pitch all season long. The problem with Kyle Freeland is he had a 140 whip. So in, we have a 20-team league. This is a 20-team league. He's going to get slapped around a little bit. But that's life. The next one I've got is Clevenger. Now, Clevenger, when you multiply him out to an entire season, pitched 111 innings. Under the rules of our Elmwood League, a pitcher who pitched 111 innings is eligible to, uh, over 100, a pitcher who pitched over 100 innings is eligible to pitch 170. So Clevenger will be able to pitch 170 innings as a starting pitcher. That's good. And then finally you have Merrill Kelly. Merrill Kelly was, he started out the season really great. But then he kind of tailed off near the end of the year. And he's only eligible to pitch 84 innings when it's extrapolated out. So, obviously, this is where I'm going to need... I'm going to have a big need for starting rotation. Because you only got two guys that can go all season with no restrictions. And one guy that can pitch 170 innings. And then another guy that can only pitch 84. So, that's where we are with that. That brings us to the bullpen. In the bullpen, I have John Gann. And Jace Fry. And Lucas Sims. And Eliza Hernandez. Now, Hernandez can pitch all season long if he's used as a reliever. He had 68 innings pitched last year. So if I were to put him in the starting rotation, he could only pitch 68 innings as a starter, and then he would be done. That really would not get me very far through the season. But then you switch him to the bullpen, and you only use him as a reliever. Under the rules of our league, he could pitch all year out of the bullpen. So that's where I'm going to plan on putting him. So uh, you got Gant. Now Gant can only pitch 41 innings. So once he pitches 41 innings, he's done. That's still, if you use him correctly, he can probably get most of the way through the season. But that's all he can do. Jace Fry, he's basically a loogie. He can pitch all year, but he's not good against right-handed uh, batters. And then you got Lucas Sims, who is great. Lucas Sims is awesome. So that leaves me with the discussion of how am I going to use my 18 picks. Again, look at the board. Here's what my plans are going in to the draft. I'm planning on drafting four starters. Um, full year if I can get them, but even maybe a couple part year and a couple full year. Even if I get a couple full year guys that um, that are full year eligible, you add those to Gosman and Freeland, and then you've got four guys that could get all the way through the season with no restrictions, and then two guys that can only pitch partial way through the season. You would still have Clevenger at seventy, Kelly at um, or uh, Clevenger at one seventy, Kelly at um, eighty four, and then two guys that could pitch and you know step in 
like tag team with those two guys, you'd be fine. But that's why I'm I'm planning on drafting four starting pitchers. Relief pitchers, I'm planning on drafting four because you got Gant that can only get part of the way through the season. Now, at 41 innings, he can probably get most of the way through this season if I use him correctly, but still. And then you got Fry, who's only really effective against lefties. So, um, and then you got Sims and Hernandez who can go all season, no restrictions, and we're, we're good. So I think four relievers right now looks like where I want to go. Possibly five, but really right now I'm planning on four. Then you've got a uh, catcher. Cisco is the only catcher I have, so I want two. You want two catchers in case Cisco gets injured, you have to play one of your backups, and then you need a backup for that guy. Um, ideally, you would need a backup for that guy while um, he's playing. So you want ideally three catchers. Um that can catch if part if only part of the season it has to be a lot of games and uh but ideally at least one that can that can play all season with no restrictions then at first base i don't have a first baseman at all right now uh bellinger can play first but you want him in the outfield and you don't want him playing at all against lefties because he doesn't hit lefties very well. So um, I would sit him um, right now. The plan would be to sit him versus lefties and not even have to use him at first base. So if I don't have a first baseman at all, you probably want to in case the first baseman that you draft as your starter gets injured. And then you have the backup first baseman that come, can come in and you don't have to use Bellinger as a first baseman, which would mean you would have to use Gritchick as your all-time, all-the-time center fielder. And then it messes up this entire outfield um, rotation. Uh, then um, at infield, I want to get three infielders. Ideally, you want to get guys that play multiple infield positions and um you know and different ones so like if you get a guy that plays short and second then you want to get another guy that plays third and first or third and second and then another guy that plays short and third or th short and second something like that and really i don't even need i i can take the emphasis off getting a guy a, a backup infielder to play second because i already have a backup second baseman in Odor, although Odor cannot even hit as well as I can. So, you know, that's a problem. Then you want, and, and then finally, I want three backup outfielders. Now, I may not need three because, as you can see, I got a ton of guys that can play outfield, that can rotate around and play different times, and Engel, who is a total backup, who's not even in the rotation, outfield rotation. But still, right now, I'm planning on three outfielders. Now, those all of that alignment can change a little bit. I could go with two out, two backup outfielders, and another um, and another um, reliever in the bullpen, which ideally I would need. Um, or I could go with just two backup infielders, because I do have Odor and another relief pitcher that's where i think that's uh the situation needs to be um augmented is possibly at um uh relief pitcher because four relievers yeah i can probably get through the season if i only draft four um, but then ideally you want to get four guys that can pitch all year and you don't want them to be specialists like fry but if you get a specialist like Fry, or you get um, two of the four that can only pitch part of the year, like like Gant, maybe they can only pitch 35 or 40 innings. You know, you don't want that either. So uh, I've got some time to think about it, and you know, I usually make those assessments as the draft goes by. Like for instance, if I get an infielder that plays all the infield positions, then 
that kind of solves the problem for me. Um, and I don't really need to get three of them. I might be able to definitely get away with two. So you play it by ear. Now, as I said before, when we started, I don't really know who I'm going to draft specifically as far as names go, but I do know that I'm going to put a heavy emphasis early on getting uh, starting and relief pitching. Because that's what, that's where my bread's going to be buttered, and that's where I'm going to make the playoffs or you know have a good team. If I can put a good team together, is I need to get another, another really really solid or good starting pitcher, and then another uh, starting pitcher that's possibly, you know, maybe, eh, but you know as the fifth starter that could possibly pitch an entire season. And I need to get another good arm out in the bullpen, a really good relief pitcher like, like Gant or Sims, who can pitch against anybody and are and are good. So, what do you guys think about my team going into the draft um, and my draft situation? I would be interested to know. Leave a comment below. Give me a thumbs up for the video if you like it. Uh, let me know what leagues, maybe strat leagues or. Um, fantasy baseball leagues that you're in um how do they run you know how, i don't do fantasy baseball because it's um i mean it's a pain to do even fantasy football because fantasy football you just need to make adjustments once a week you know like you find out who's injured you got a week to figure out who would play for you baseball not like that baseball you've got different pitchers that won't be able to that won't be pitching that um week you've got guys that are injured from day to day and you have to make those re replacements every day it's it's just too much to for me to be thinking about with everything else i got going on with the channel and with my other strat leagues and everything so i don't do fantasy baseball but if you want to talk about fantasy baseball that's fine too um but Right now, I think that's it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.